What's up, everybody, and welcome back. The international break is over, and we have a full slate ahead for match day 16. Um, we're going to go ahead, jump into it, but first, let's talk about the deal with Apple for 10 years. I think it's a great thing. Uh, I think it's going to be nice for those people that need to want to watch their team, but can't because of blackout dates and all that. There's no blackout dates with it. We're also going to get to see some more MLS next. I feel like we don't get to see that. I, I want to see these kids and these young adults develop and and all that to you know see them from that MLS next move up to MLS or even overseas. So I'm excited for the deal. I cannot wait for it. Yes, I am a subscriber to Apple TV, so I'll get to see all the games and all the content and everything, but... I would probably recommend it. Um, I know that they're also going to offer some free games each week too to watch. So I think it's a good idea. We'll see though. So let's go ahead and jump into week 16. So first up we have the Seattle Sounders versus LAFC. Currently Seattle is four wins and a loss. I told you guys they're coming up. They're already in a playoff spot. They are seventh currently in the West. LAFC, on the other hand, is struggling a little bit with two wins and three losses in the last five. LAFC, though, is averaging 2.1 goals a game. I'm not sure for uh, Seattle. The last time that these two teams played was in LA. LAFC won that game 3 to nothing. I do, however, because Seattle played, I think, either last night or the night before, I do believe that this game will end in a draw 2-2 two to two for um, Seattle and LAFC. So, moving right along here, we got LA Galaxy versus Portland Timber. Currently, the Galaxy are two wins, a draw, and two losses, where Portland is one win and four losses. They are still struggling. Kind of surprised by this. The last time that these two teams played, um, LA did win in Portland, 3-1 to one away. Again, both of these teams haven't kept clean sheets in a while. LAF, uh, LA Galaxy, excuse me, haven't kept one in six matches, where Timbers haven't kept one in seven. And they haven't won an away game in six matches. So, I don't think I said it, though. Um, LA Galaxy are currently sitting fifth in the West, but I, I believe that LA Galaxy will get this done at home 2-1 to one over Portland Timbers. I just think... I think L.A. is just too good uh, for Timbers. But, you know, you never know because there's been some games the team that you think would win doesn't win. Yeah, it's just a weird season for um, MLS this year. So, moving on, we have New York Red Bull versus Toronto FC. Currently, the Red Bull are two wins, a draw, and two losses. Toronto, though, on a little bit of a winning streak here with three wins in a row three wins a draw and a loss in the last five are we going to see toronto make a push for the end of the season or the second half of the season are they going to make the playoffs tell me down below what you think um new york red bull haven't kept a clean sheet in the last six games toronto hasn't kept a clean sheet in 26 games that is kind of mind-boggling in, in my opinion, that's that's wild. But I don't believe that the Red Bull get the, I mean, Toronto get this done away. I think Red Bull are too good. And I do think this is going to be a convincing win, 3-1 to one for the Red Bull at home. Next up, we have Columbus Crew versus Charlotte FC. Currently, uh, the Crew are two wins, a draw, and two losses. Charlotte is two wins and three losses. Uh, Charlotte has scored six goals in their last five games. These teams have never played against each other. I think that Charlotte is somewhat inconsistent, um, but that that is going to happen with a you know team that's just starting out. They just fired their coach. It's just it's wild that they they let him go already. You you would think that you would want a coach for the re like the whole season, especially for a brand new franchise, but it is what it is. Currently, Charlotte is sixth, though, which is still making the playoffs, where Columbus Crew are setting 10th. 
I, however, believe that Columbus Crew win this game very slim, one to nothing over Charlotte FC. So we move on just a couple states over to Philadelphia Union versus FC Cincinnati. Currently, the Union are one win, three draws, and a loss, whereas FC Cincinnati is two wins and three losses in the last five. Um, Philadelphia Union haven't lost to FC Cincinnati in their last five, and that is five wins and a draw. Um, the last time that they did play was at Subaru Park, and the Union won that game two to nothing. I believe that the Union will win this game and get it done at home. They are currently sitting second. FC Cincinnati is seventh uh, in the East there, but I think the Union get it done two to nothing over FC Cincinnati. So we're moving on to two pretty hot teams here. We got uh, Montreal setting third in the East, and then we have Austin FC setting fourth in the West. I, I'm, I like both of these teams right now. They are doing very well. Currently, Montreal are three wins and two losses in the last five, whereas Austin is a win, a draw, and three losses. So they're struggling a little bit here. Montreal is averaging two goals a game right now, though, so that's good for them. And Austin haven't kept a clean sheet in six. I do believe, though, with Montreal being at home, they win this game 2-1 to one over Austin FC. So now we move to the south. We have Orlando City versus Houston Dynamo. Uh, Orlando currently are three wins, a draw, and a loss in the last five, whereas Houston is two wins and three losses. These two teams are, um, Orlando has won one against them. They've drawn two, and Houston have won two of these in, in these matchups. They've played each other five times. Uh, Houston has scored six goals in their last five games. I, however, believe that Houston's going to come into Orlando, and I think that they get this done on the road 2 to nothing over Orlando City. Next up, we have Chicago Fire versus D.C. United, two teams that are really struggling. They are actually the last two teams in the East, 13th uh, D.C. United, 14th Chicago Fire. I think uh, Chicago Fire are currently one draw and four losses. D.C. United is two draws and three losses. Chicago has conceded the most penalties this season. One of the teams that have con conceded the most at four. They haven't won a match in 11 games. D.C. United have not kept a clean sheet in the last four, and they haven't won a game in the last five. Do we think that it's going to be a draw? I would really like Chicago to turn it around. I really like their new logo, their new rebranding. They need to do something. You know, Chicago's been around for a very long time, the fire. It's not that I like them, but I would like to see them do better than what they have in the past year. So I think they might turn around a little bit, and they do win this game at Soldier Field. one nothing over D.C. United. Now we move on to FC Dallas versus the Vancouver Whitecaps. Currently, Dallas is two wins and three losses in the last five. Vancouver is three wins and two losses in the last five. Uh, Dallas has not kept a clean sheet in the last five games. And uh, Vancouver, though, haven't lost to FC Dallas in the last five meetings, three wins and two draws. I, however, think that that will end. Uh, Vancouver did play midweek, I think Tuesday night. I think FC Dallas wins this game 3-2 to two over the Whitecaps there at Toyota Stadium. They are at home. I feel like there's more home wins than away, so I, I got to give it to my boys down there in Dallas. Two to two, three to two victory. Jeez, can't talk this morning. Um, moving on here, we got Real Salt Lake versus the San Jose Earthquakes. Currently, Real Salt Lake is three wins and two losses in the last five, whereas the Earthquake are one win, two draws, two losses. Real Salt Lake are currently third in the West, whereas San Jose is unfortunately sitting 13th. I believe Real Salt Lake just has a better team than San Jose Earthquakes, and I believe that this ends up, though, 
I think Earthquake turning around a little bit and it ends up in a 3-3 three three draw uh, there in Salt Lake. Next up, we have Atlanta United versus Inter Miami. Atlanta is getting Joseph Martinez back. They played yesterday in like a friendly uh, versus, uh, I can't pronounce the name. It is a Mexico team, I believe. Um, they look pretty good. Joseph was back. He played the first half. Um, Caleb Wiley is back also. I think that that's going to help a lot. Um, what is it? Almada, he is out, though, uh, on suspension from red cards for uh, an altercation with the, the ref in a couple games ago. So currently Atlanta is one win, two draws, two losses, whereas Inter-Miami is two wins, two draws, and a loss in the last five. Atlanta hasn't kept a clean sheet in the last seven. These two teams have not drawn in the last three games against each other. Inter-Miami have scored seven in their last five, though. They are at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The last time that these two teams played, Inter-Miami won 2-1. to one. Uh, I believe that Atlanta, they played very good last night in their friendly. Yes, it was a friendly, but it is against a Liga MX, Liga MX team. They looked pretty good from the highlights and stuff that I saw. I do believe that Atlanta will go and win this game two to nothing, and finally breaking that clean sheet, uh, that seven game clean sheet, not having a clean sheet. Moving on to our third to last game, we have NYC FC versus Colorado Rapid. Currently, New York is on a five game winning streak. It might even be a little bit longer than that. Uh, Colorado Rapids currently are two wins and three losses in the last five. New York City have kept the most clean sheets this year at eight, which is pretty good. They haven't lost to Colorado in the last five meetings, three wins and two draws. But Colorado haven't won a game in the last eight away games. So, with that being said, with them being at Yankee Stadium... NYCFC win this game very easy, three to nothing. I know that they're getting ready. They might be losing Castellanos, maybe, uh, for transfer, but I believe that they still get this done, three to nothing over Colorado. Now our second to last game is uh, Nashville SC versus Sporting KC. Currently, Nashville is three wins and two draws in the last five where Sporting is two wins, a draw, and two losses. Sporting haven't kept a clean sheet in the last seven. Nashville is currently sitting sixth in the table, whereas Sporting KC is sitting last in the East. These two teams, they have each won one game against each other, and there's been no draws. With them being at Geodis Park, I believe that Nashville will get this done. Two to one, they've kind of been looking up the, these last couple weeks. So two to one there in Nashville. And last but not least, we have the Revs versus Minnesota United. Currently, the Revs are two wins, a two draws, and a loss. Where Minnesota is one win, a draw, and three losses. Again, these teams with not keeping clean sheets. Everyone does not keep clean sheets in multiple matches in a row. New York, I mean not New York, New England haven't kept one in, in seven games, whereas Minnesota hasn't kept one in eight. Um, I believe that that streak continues for both of them with the Revs playing midweek. I think that this game ends up in a one-to-one -one draw there at Gillette Stadium. So that is all of the picks for this week. Thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up if you like the content. Also subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that. And we'll see you next time.